excited, boys. Thanks for having me, guys. It's nice to meet you guys. Of course, by the yeah, way. Nice yeah, nice to meet you, you as well. Too. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode two of the Next Gen Show. If you don't know who we are, I'm Rosie, and I'm here with my esteemed colleagues, Frankie and Jack. Gentlemen, how are we on this fine evening? Welcome to the show. Yo, 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 how's it going, Doing everyone? Great. We have an amazing show lined up for you guys with our first interview guest we're bringing on, and we're starting off with a banger. Have you ever heard of Greg Goes All In, a.k.a. the comedian of poker, the funniest guy in the niche? Well, we are bringing him on for an amazing interview. You guys are not going to want to miss it. Before we get into things, make sure to leave a review if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts. Drop a like on YouTube and comment what you guys think about this. Also, be sure to ask us more questions as we'll include these questions, maybe one or two of them per show. So, without further ado... Let's go talk to Greg Goes All In. All right, guys, it is time for the esteemed Greg Goes All In interview portion of our podcast. Greg, thank you for coming on, my man. How are you doing this fine evening? I'm good. Thank you guys so much for having me. Excited to be on the podcast. First first guest on the podcast, officially. First guest. That means you will be our best guest automatically. You're going to be at the top of the leaderboard. Amazing, <laughs> and the gl- we gotta get can we get a pair of those because you were oh you know I have twenty pre order that I'm bringing to Texas oh let's they're go. gonna twenty you might need more than twenty Greg those are gonna sell like hotcakes oh you know I'm just gonna hand them for free when I reach the tables you know just hand them out my my dream is when I one day when I start my own poker room is that instead of the dealers getting all in buttons. They just get all in glasses. So whenever someone goes all in, they just throw it to the player and they have to put it on. Oh, that's beautiful. Start splashing in pots and like awarding them to whoever wins the pot gets the sunglasses. I, I did that during uh, on for poker, poker out, out loud. loud and it was it was fun. It was fun. People were just playing some make, play, playing loosey goosey, trying to win themselves a pair of glasses. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't bring enough for everyone. And Matt Vaughn made the comments like this reminds me of like. When you're in like elementary school and like the kid brings gum to class and the teacher's like, did you bring enough for everyone? And no, I did not, I did not bring enough for everyone. <laughs> I love it. We're going to, we're actually going to get into the, to the poker out loud stuff a little bit later, but for the first Please question, don't. That was embarrassing. <laughs> we're, don't worry. We're going to ease into it. We're going to ease into it. For our first okay, okay. question, we're going to throw at you. It's just going to be to your roots. How did you become interested in poker and making poker content specifically? Like how did it begin? Sure. Two dis- so those are two different questions. How to get into poker and then how to get into content creation. True, true. So how I got into poker, um, I like I just I had an inkling of interest in it because my cousins had a poker set when I was young. We didn't really play a lot. And then one time Courtney took me to a casino in Niagara and I was like, I want to try to play poker. I, like did a quick five minute Google review of like the hand rankings and stuff. I'm like, I got this. Easy. Let's go. And I go play and I'm sitting at a table and I'm playing and I'm very confused because everybody's talking about their hand out loud. Like everyone's openly talking about their hands. I'm like, what the hell is going on? It was only 20 minutes into playing that I realized I was playing something called Ultimate Texas Hold'em. <laughs> and I was at a, at a table game and I was just so mortified and so embarrassed that from that point on, I was like, I'm going to study and learn the game. Like at this point, I didn't even understand that there were two different formats of poker, like tournament and cash. So I started learning about poker then. And that was like right before the pandemic hit. So probably around February 2020, something like that. Wow, that's recent. So you just yeah. got into poker then. Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> if, if it's not indicative of my, from my, my, uh, if it's not already evident from my skill level at poker, yes, I'm very new. We have no and room then, to talk about a poker skill level just yet. Uh, yeah, we're still, we're still. yeah. I think us. I think next gen and Greg goes all in. We're very similar in that we're kind of near the bottom of the poker vlogger skill chart, but it leaves us. But our room but our go. meme game and shorts game is strong. So exactly. that's what matters. Put smiles um, on people's faces. It doesn't matter if we know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> And then in terms of the content creation and how that started. So after having just like read books and like getting into it, understanding it, uh, pandemic happened. And then so I got even more into it because I was just, I needed a new hobby um, since like gyms were closed and stuff like that. And at this time I was working for kids TV. And at that time I was still fortunate to have a job. A lot of people in my, in the acting industry lost their love jobs. And I was very fortunate. I was able to work from my bedroom in a blanket fort. 
Um, but after six months of that, I got really f***ing bored. <laughs> I was just like, like by the time it was like December. So December 2020 rolled up. By that time, I had already watched a lot of Rampage and Brad Owen. And I was yeah. like, let me start my own poker vlog. Um, I'm a very impulsive kind of guy. So I just did it. And then I realized this was the dumbest idea I've ever had. Like none of the casinos are open. Like it's, it's underground ter- in, games in Toronto are sketchy as f- And so I was like, what the hell did I start a poker vlog for? So I did a, if you watch my first few videos, it's like $5 no limit on global poker. And I was like, this is really sh-. And so like, how else can I make content? And then I was, I was like, well, let me dabble in some sketches and things like that. And then that's when things for the channel really took off. And that's when I really discovered there was a huge, uh, huge demand and space for comedy within the poker world. And it was really cool, like discovering that niche and being almost one of the first to the first people in that very, very niche space within a niche. Um, and then more success came in with sponsorships and monetization. And then, um, I was able to quit my job. So I was like, Hey, kids TV. I did a bad thing. I started a gambling channel while I was the face of your, the brand for your kids TV show. <laughs> but uh, I know it's really hard to replace a host. Um, so uh, here's my two months notice. The next day they accept, they accepted my resignation the day after. <laughs> and so I was, uh, yeah, I told Courtney, I was like, uh, you know, remember how I was going to start full time on the YouTube channel two months from now? No, that started today. <laughs> that started today. Well, so and Cor- that's Courtney. You said is your girlfriend, right? Courtney is my girlfriend. We just celebrated our two year anniversary oh, like two weeks ago in Vegas. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, but not only she's my is she my girlfriend, she's also been um, a, my full time partner on the channel. So we work on the channel full time right now. I was and... gonna say I love her parts in in some of your shorts and skits. I think she's hilarious as well. She does a good job uh, playing along. Yeah, she's she she's 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 hilarious, guys. That's she played poker as well. She kind of not really like she got into it just because like I kind of got into it, and then we both kind of had like a little hobby. She learned as I learned. I would like share concepts with her and stuff. Like she does, she plays recreationally. She'll go occasionally go to like one two and just crush. Um, But uh, yeah, we just played like most of it was really us just playing heads up every day for six months during the pandemic, and her beating me. Um, dream girl that's a dream dream girl girl. yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) and the funny thing is like my background is acting like i studied i like went to i went to a music theater school i have an honors bachelor's in music theater performance um and where she also went to theater school but she went for the production side of things so her specialty is like set design lighting design costume um so it's been really fun seeing her perform and act and i think she's really got a natural knack for it that's so yeah, cool. I want to say congratulations on finding like your your own like niche inside the poker industry because the comedy videos, although like it didn't seem like there'd be a market for you know specific comedy <laughs> poker, they just blew up and it just kind of shows the shorter videos, just like the virality is like insane. Mm-hmm. And I know like tight players at the poker table, like that video just blew up. So yeah, I really loved we've loved all your videos so far. Thanks, man. And to like address like the idea of like comedy being like needed in the poker community, I think definitely so. Cause like when I got into poker, I like, I know I didn't really know a lot about it, but then as I kind of got into more, I was just like, this, this was, I thought this was supposed to be fun. Like now it just seems really boring. <laughs> it's just like, you know, like talking about solvers, GTO, and like, of course there's room for that and stuff, but like, I always kind of viewed poker or gambling in general as a form of entertainment. And I, when I think of poker, I kind of thought, I guess, of like the characters in the past, you know, all these like very centric people and, and like almost like characters. And it's just like, it seemed like that kind of was disappearing in the poker community. And so I was just like, I think, you know, I accidentally found the demand for it. And then I just leaned into it a little bit more for sure. Well, no, now absolutely. that you've kind of like found your audience, have you got like more serious about the game itself? I know you've been doing some WSOP events. Like how have those gone so far and how has your progression of learning the game gone as far as passion and love for the game? I So yeah, I think I I have to kind of think about this question from like two different perspectives like and separate Greg goes all in from Greg Liao cuz like Greg goes all in he's a kind of like he is kind of a, like a character I kind of play like he's kind of like a donkey and like all that shit but Greg he has you know like I he has he's integrated in the poker community 
he at you know for at least three years that's my contract with gg so i'm here for at least another three years y'all awesome. uh, full disclosure so it's like so like and i'm like losing money so <laughs> it behooves me to get better in my game so that i don't end up losing more money anyway like right now i'm in a sweet spot where i'm making money from losing money like i just document the stories of me losing my money and then people pay me for it and it's freaking great but i would like to mitigate my expenses as much as possible so yes I'm trying to be break even. That is the goal right now. Uh, October, I had my very first profitable month. Oh. <laughs> I'm super stoked about it. So let's go. Let's go. <laughs> no, we always- November is going, shit, but like we'll get back. <laughs> but here's here's to Texas. Yeah, we always said the the only way next gen can go down is if we can't stay even as poker players. So so if we're even, we're happy because next gen can keep alive as long as our bankroll's okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I can, I kind of yeah, want to ahead. touch on I mean, it really piques my interest like your your theater background and you you mentioned kids television. Can you go into specifics on that? Like I want to know like what shows you were on, what you did, how you got the gig, like is there clips that I can find on YouTube and watch? Like how is Yes, you can. I I'm, I'm not contractually obligated to that kids show anymore. So here we go. Um so well, here's a bit of my resume. Uh, so I graduated from Sheridan College in, from in Oakville, Ontario in 2019. Um, and at, right after that, I did my first professional gig. Um, it was regional theater. It was a musical production of Grease the Musical. Oh, summer loving had me a blast. I was in, I was in the ensemble. Courtney was the follow spot girl. And that's how we met. Oh. So, What's a follow spot girl? True love story. She's she's the person the person with the spotlight that <laughs> like moves oh, that it around follow and follows who's the- talking or doing things. Yeah, yeah, the star. It was never on me. <laughs> I was in the background dancing. So I did that for um, that was a two month contract. And during that time, I lived in a camper van because I was just really obsessed about the van life. And acting is just such a stupid industry where it requires it's the one of the lowest paying industries that requires you to live in the most expensive cities so the thing that made sense to me was living in a van so i lived in a van during that time um i don't know how courtney ended up being my girlfriend or why she was like "Ooh, an actor in debt that lives in a van like let's go you know so that's how we met um i think for her it was an investment she was asking <laughs> for your money <laughs> yeah exactly um and then after that i moved to toronto in my van um that no apartment nothing i had nothing lined up um i had just had an agent and then uh shortly after i got a job at a moxie's which was nice just a little restaurant uh and during that time i booked another thing i booked a netflix short netflix series it's called age of samurai um it's a docudrama and it was publicized kind of as kind of as the game of thrones but f- historical feudal japan it did not turn out as exciting as they pitched it. Like it's a pretty shit documentary, <laughs> but if you really want to bear through it, I'm in episodes five and six, but mostly six. Right uh, I down. play I play Kobayakawa Hideaki. You can find clips of it. I put it on my YouTube channel. There's there's clips of it. It's like the video I call it when you're a poker player, but also a a daimyo in feudal Japan or something <laughs> stupid like that. Um, and then after that, I booked the kids TV thing. And so I was able to, um, I was able to quit. I was able to live in an apartment at that point. I was like, great. I don't have to live in a van anymore. I have a pretty nice lucrative job as a producer slash host with kids TV. And for that, we basically did a uh, 15 minute live show every day at four 30, um, where we would like hang out in the tree fort and every day would have a different theme. Like it's superhero day in the tree fort. Welcome kids. Um, and if you really want to find some clips from it, it's uh, on that TVO kids show. It's uh, it, it's on TV, but they have a YouTube channel as well. If you scroll back eight, ten months from before, you'll you'll see clips. Wait, what's it called? Can you say that again? That TVO kids show. That oh, TV I might have to throw some clips of that in our YouTube channel. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I just think um, I think your fans, I think poker people would love to see that. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Let me let me see. Can I share my screen? I just want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That TVO I'm kids so excited. Show. Oh, this is so oh. awesome. So so we got to scroll back because they fired me eight months ago. My last show I ever did was, hey, they was didn't Family Day. You, you quit. I was, I was supposed to go in for Poetry Day 
and then they uh they uh oh no 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 where was my oh no my very last day was old stuff day i was supposed to go in for around the world day old stuff and they told day. me that morning that i was fired <laughs> so <laughs> i bet you had a blast doing this dude it was a lot of fun i i it was a it was a dream job all on its own so it was it was kind of yeah it was a dream job all on its own oh my god so but um yeah, I don't know. So anyway, was, it, was it only on YouTube or did it show on like It was on li- it was on live television. So what channel was it on? Like is this was this in the US? It was on Canada? it was on TVO. So TVO stands for TV Ontario, uh. which produ- which is a government funded program, which is government funded programming. They do a lot of documentaries and news segments and pieces, but they also have a subset for uh, TVO Kids, which is programming uh, commercial free programming for children. That was, uh, you know, it's like educational. It's for kids from like anywhere from ages four to 12. And um, in no way does it condone gambling of any kind. So the <laughs> partnership plot, between right? us and TVO was didn't, was not uh, conducive anymore. So. Welcome back, kids. Today is gambling day. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a YouTube video where it was, um, it was uh, a YouTube video where I made it was like, uh, poker but for kids or something like that <laughs> just to like satire that so um i yeah. have a question on just like the, i just find it so fascinating and we were actually just in los angeles um for halloween and i was on set of a music video and kind of just seeing how big productions are for like these shows do you get gigs through your agent like does he just go out and just find stuff and say greg you're gonna do this at this time this at this time like is that how it works yeah so how how agents how the acting industry works is if you're in film and television you the only way you can get work is through an agent right so any production is gonna have a casting director and they're not gonna go reach out to single single individual actors they're gonna reach out to reputable agents which then have a full roster of actors and they can then provide the specific kinds of actors that are needed for that production right so occasionally as an actor i you know i will get um i will get auditions for from my agent he'll email me and be like hey there's a commercial there's this there's this can do you want can you send in a tape um and at that point i'll say like yeah for sure you know sometimes it's a self-tape sometimes you, you have to go into a specific like location and do the audition um uh right now uh because i'm I've been kind of busy like i've kind of been in vegas and i've been busy doing this i've been put a bit on the back roster for uh for my agent which is fine and i'm happy about um but occasionally i'll get self tape commercials here and there um but uh yeah no i'm excited to kind of get back more into it when i get back to toronto i'll definitely be more active and i guess one of the things i've been thinking about a lot is just as a you know, as in my early twenties, trying to establish my careers, I don't really know what's happened to the acting thing. Like, I really, I, I, I literally invested like ten years of my life training for like acting and musical theater, and now this is happening, and I don't know if I'm, it's, I'm gonna go back into it. It's gonna stay as an a, amalgamation of the two, but you know, as men in our early twenties, you know, I, I think, I think that's a, you know, a pretty universal like feeling. Like, what the hell am I doing with my life? And what the hell am I going to do with my life? <laughs> totally. Absolutely. Totally. Yeah, do you think we, talk, we should get agents, Greg? Really. What do you think? Maybe we well, get into the acting sphere. Well, I mean, you've, I'm talking to two engineers and an accountant. So, like, do you have an interest in acting? Well, I don't know. But, like, being content creators, we all, I always wonder if there's, like, ways for us to get – if we hired someone as, like, an agent or someone that was in charge of finding opportunities for us, whether it be brand deals or other stuff, that it would be a little easier to get opportunities like that. Sure. Um, you, getting an agent in itself is also a huge – is a huge ordeal. So um, in order to get an agent, you need, you know, I think a reputable agent. If an, any, any agent ever asks you for money before you've booked anything, it's a scam. Don't do it. Don't, just don't do it. Okay, like there's a lot of scam out, scams out there that are like that. Don't do it. Good to know. Um, they, your agent only gets paid when you get paid. You get a, they get a commission of it. Ten percent oh. for film and TV. Oh, sorry. Yeah, fifteen percent for film and TV. Ten percent for live theater. Twenty percent for digital media. Um, if you want an agent, you're gonna have to build a demo reel. Like you're not just gonna just take anybody off the streets. They want someone that they're gonna can invest in. So uh, you're gonna have to build a demo reel. So that's the grind of doing free work, doing student films creating a you know a demo reel then pitching it doing you know sending out resumes um it's not easy it's a bit of a grind for sure connections help um but like i sent out i was pretty lucky i sent out seven seven applications two got back to me 
one, I, they were like, can you send a voice demo reel? I was like, yep, for sure. I sent a voice demo reel, never heard back from them again. And then the agent I actually booked with was my tap teacher from school. So I already had a good connection with them, but, uh, my agent hunting, uh, would have been a lot more difficult if it wasn't for that connection. So, um, so Rosie, if you want an agent, build a demo reel, do free work. I think it's so fascinating. Apply to so many, apply to lots and lots of agents. Very and cool. don't get scammed. And that's don't it. get scammed. Get an and that's how you become an actor. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, um, moving on a little bit, and we mentioned we'd touch on this later on. So, how was your experience playing on Poker Out Loud? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Terrifying, <laughs> like absolutely terrifying. It's like, like I'm not even a winning one, two, one, three player. And then Matt Burke, he's like, Greg, come on out and play with Ryan DePaulo, Matt Vaughn. And bet on drew like just huge crushers mm -hmm. and i'm like okay like can we we're playing like one three or something right he's like yeah 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 whatever y'all are comfortable with five five i fly out to <laughs> vegas i get there they're like by the way we're playing five five thousand dollar max i'm like go f yourselves i'm in <laughs> i'm doing okay at first i just like f flop a set and i'm like okay i'm up 300 bucks and then I decide to turn the second nuts into a bluff against the first nuts and just shove my stack into a poker beast, mm -hmm. lose everything. And then spoiler, spoilers, I, I make a bit of a redemption in, in one of the later episodes, the very Ooh. last hand of the day. Um, but uh, to share some insight into poker out loud for people who who watch it, but have never experienced it and things that you wouldn't expect from it. It takes a long, it's, it, it, we, it takes a long time. Like we did an eight hour day and each hand took maybe 15 minutes because everyone's talking. So you don't actually play a lot of hands. So I played fairly tight. I was trying to do Courtney proud. I was trying to play right, play tight, which then really resulted right. in very few, very little cam on like camera time. So actually you'll find that when you go and poke a lot, a lot of the players are playing a lot looser, uh, Kato be uh, Kato beast. Poker Beast, uh, for example, the, the, the mother he like messaged me. He's like, Greg, we're the underdogs for this. So like, you know, just play right, like play tight. You know, that's the way to win this. And then the guy just plays like a freaking maniac and gets all the, the screen time. I'm like, you, you <laughs> dirty dog. Yeah, like no. a maniac. <laughs> Absolute maniac. And then like, of course he plays queen four off suit against ace queen and flops two pair. And you're like, what the hell? You know? Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, it takes a, it's a long time. Um, uh, it's an eight hour day could be longer. Um, and I think just my personal experience, I was, I was very scared. As you can see, I was, I wasn't being funny. I wasn't cracking too many jokes. I was just happy to be there and trying to preserve my stack. So if I could do it again, I definitely would be a lot more relaxed for sure. And I would, uh, speak louder. Cause I realized, Oh wow, you cannot hear me. <laughs> Cause I, I'm just like, they're going to hear me. You were hear thoughts. I thought it was so funny. Honestly, yeah. I really liked how you were on the show because like you, like, I think that's how a normal person would have been in that atmosphere, like playing a game that they're not comfortable with, like relatively new to poker. Like if any of us three were there and we actually were invited, but we just couldn't make it out that day. Cause of school, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. we would have been very similar to you. So it was kind of cool to have that insight on like the more normal poker player. And, how and then plan. fully Holy juxtaposed God. by Ryan DePaulo on my left, who's just screaming. Yeah. Like, I, I'm like, I'd like would finish a thought. And before I could play the music, the man starts screaming on my left. He's like, he's like, ah, oh, now that Greg's checked and I'm like, you know, I'm going to go ahead and block. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. I would have been not so allowed to like look at them, that. right? Like you can't look at their lips. Is that how? Like no, like 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 no, like like no one's trying to angle there. Everyone knows. Like everyone's like everyone's there for to make good content. Everyone you know like is a good person. But it's, it's like you don't you know. It's we're all part of the vlogging industry. No one wants to no one wants to f anyone over, especially when it's being recorded with six different cameras. <laughs> very true. Very true. That's awesome. So, so what was your craziest hand or craziest experience on it? I know you kind of touched had on that yet one to happen against yet. Kato. It was so I was basically after I, the three biggest hands was like I flop a set, I'm up money. Uh, I flop this, I turn the second nuts, I lose my entire stack. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm a down a thousand at this point. Uh, I buy in for another thousand. The very very last uh, orbit we did bomb. We were just going to do an orbit of bomb pots. So we just did a whole orbit of bomb pots, and then there's one hand where I have like. I have seven, four or something. And I like flop two pair. And then 
river comes like uh river comes like uh the, the brings in the flush draw but gives me a boat and like i'm literally wh whispering to the dealer i'm like conrad if i could right now like i'd lean over and kiss you like i was thinking <laughs> to myself like what would be the perfect card to come on the turn like i know that convoke is on a draw i know he's on a draw so i'm gonna go i'm gonna go and you know this would be the perfect card and it came and then uh so basically yeah i i i i, I end up stacking convoke and then they go, cut. That's a wrap. And everyone's <laughs> shocked. And everyone's like, that was the last ad. <laughs> Holy crap! Um, and before I continue, I'd like to uh, introduce my lovely partner and and girlfriend Courtney, who just come in coincidentally. Hey, what's up, hey. Courtney? Nice what to up, meet Courtney? You. <laughs> How you doing, Courtney? We love Hi. your work. <laughs> Thank you are you. amazing. Love your work. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, I love it. We're gonna. Sorry, I'll leave you be. <laughs> Bye, babe. Bye, Courtney. We're gonna think of a bit and we're gonna come record with you guys. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, that yeah, would we be can, so we, much. We fun. can film. We can film a sketch or something. Okay, so fun. as we're kind of running out of time, we got a couple more, one more question left, and then a fun little reaction video we want to do. Sure. So, Jack, why don't you fire away this last one? This is a fun one. So this question, uh, just pretty basic actually. Where did the name Greg go all in come from? How did you get? That oh, that's a ball? that's a great question. It's it's to give you an idea. So when I was in college, I started a massage business. I was you know we were it was theater school. We were dancing five days a week. You know what I'm saying like I was like how can I capitalize on my peers' pain? I was like I'll start a massage business. So I went back home to Vancouver and I got certified in Swedish massage. I went back to school and I started a massage business and the massage business name was Greg Gives Good Massages. This man does it and, all. <laughs> and then when I lived in a van, I was like, let me make content surrounding this. And I called it Greg Lives in a Van. And so when I started the poker thing, I was like, I need to stay on brand. And I was like, what can I do? Like Greg plays poker. Greg C bet makes a modest C bet. Like, I don't know. And then one of my friends was like, how about Greg goes all in? And I was like, that's brilliant. And that's how I came to became to be Greg goes all in. And so far, this has been the most successful venture, uh, business venture so far. I hope Greg goes all in is the one that sticks to the end. I hope you stay in this space, Greg. It's well, at least at least for three years. Yeah. <laughs> that's what my contract says. I love, <laughs> love, it. Legal too. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Okay, for the final part of this interview, I have I'm a video excited. that we're going to watch. And Greg, I want you to react to it and kind of just uh, walk us through it. I think you'll- I think you'll, you've seen it before. I think you've seen it before. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. I'll just add it to, I'll just watch it on here. I'll watch it on here. Okay, absolutely. Yo, what up, it's your boy G Money. That's right, we're not using our God-given first names. We out here using our made up goofy <laughs> nicknames. Shout out to my boys, Jello, Rosie, and Frankie. Okay, so when I was like shooting this, like this was literally like my third, like fourth take. And my voice was just, I was just picking up Courtney from work, you know, and it was just like, I was just like, I, the next gen hoodie had just come in. I was like, I had planned this sketch for a while. So I was like, moment came in. I was like, I have to film it immediately. So I'm just driving to pick up Courtney. And I, I kept butchering it because there's a lot to say. But like, at this point, it's my third or fourth take and I was losing my voice. <laughs> um, yes, sir. We up here. Get, get this off me. COVID <laughs> Okay, this was around the time y'all were in Florida. We went to Miami. And yeah. and oh, Miami, and y'all didn't give a shit. I'm watching your videos, and I'm like, yeah, y'all know there's a pandemic going on, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And of course, I'm grilling you on it. I'm in a, I'm from Canada. I went to theater school. I'm in an interracial relationship. Of course, I'm <laughs> liberal. And so I'm like, what the hell are you guys doing? COVID, what? Yes, sir. We up here in Canada representing the next gen poker merch. That's right. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes sir! Yes sir! I don't know if it aged very well because I don't know if do you guys still say yes sir? And like is that your catchphrase anymore? I don't feel like it, it is. The catchphrase is basically just yelling a lot, like, which I think go. Right, right, right. The, the yeah, left let go, go is yes, pretty sir. on point. I think you, right, right. you nailed it. I mean <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And the sweat the, the hoodie was was very nice. Good, very good material. Thank you, next uh, gen. Sure. Make sure you like the next gen merch <laughs> and go buy their card protectors and hey, uh, there you go. And buy Greg's stuff too. We're gonna plug all of that below. Um Greg, <laughs> thank you lose. so much for coming on, being our first guest, our inaugural guest. This was uh, this, this flew was by. Blast. I mean the fact that we're wrapping it up, I'm kinda bummed, but 
Um, we're excited to see you. I think we can now make this announcement, Greg. Are you are you venturing out to Texas anytime soon? Oh, you know I'm coming to steal your money. Oh mm. my! You know goodness. I'm trying to get my merch money back. Oh. <laughs> Those oh. hoodies, they're good, but they ain't cheap. So you know, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm getting my investment back. So uh, what but are yeah. the dates, Greg? What are we doing? Yes, I will be in Texas from. Let, let me rehearse this. When the f- am I coming? Courtney, when are we flying to Texas? <laughs> Twenty seventh, and then leave December fourth, right? No, we leave December third. December third, twenty seventh, twenty third, D- December. Nope, December. Se- December twenty. November twenty seventh. November twenty seventh. December third. December third. David, leave this in, by the way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Ask me again. Ask me again. So, Greg, what are the dates? What are the details? When are you coming to our state? Yes. First take. Here we go. I'm going to be in Texas from November 27th to December 3rd. You know, your boy is going to be dropping in to Dallas and I will see you in Austin as well. Doesn't matter which city. I'm here to take next gen's money. Yes, sir. Yes, Let's sir. go. November yes, sir. 27th. <laughs> Beautiful. If you like the podcast, drop a like. Subscribe to Greg everywhere. Thank you to Texas Cardhouse for helping us put this on. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.